Welcome to the Teacher's Pep Rally. If you missed our last episode, we had a conversation with author, board president of the Creative Inspiration Journey School, and minister Jeff Dixon about the glorious grind of being an educator and ways we can explore with our students in the classroom. Please go back and check it out. And while you're there, leave us a review. We value you and these conversations. Our guest has had over 20 years of experience in education, serving the K through eight level, project-based learning, yay, Google-based high schools, and two county offices, including as an assistant superintendent and IT director. He is proud of his work with CUE, a nonprofit community of connected educators focused on improving education for all learners in California and Nevada. He served there as the chief learning officer and executive director. He has co-written with Marlena Heburn, a series of edu protocol field guides for teachers for just about any subject, any grade level, kindergarten through adult. Let's talk about life, edu protocols, and learning. Please welcome to the Teachers Pep Rally, John Carippo. Yay! Yay! And by the way, I, I'm an ordained minister, so we got a whole minister series going here. What? I have performed back. weddings for two former students. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. I knew and I'm not a minister. Spirit, they, they, they made me do it. <laughs> that's awesome. Wow. That's a yeah. story for another day. That's probably right. the most a interesting whole other thing. hello we've ever <laughs> had from a guest. For sure. Well, before we get started, John, we're going to do a little something we've started this year before we get going deep into the conversations. Letitia, do you want to explain what it is? Absolutely. Welcome again, John. What a treat to have you. I can't wait to get started. But we I have, love your uh, energy. We have started doing something this season called Happy Happenings, John. And it's just an opportunity for us as TPR family to be intentional about, you know, just acknowledging the good things that happen yeah. throughout our week. And then we come yeah. back here to TPR and share it with our TPR family. Putting Take out a some moment, positive, right? Yeah, Take a moment. Absolutely. Positivity, love, and just wanting to put some good stuff in, into the atmosphere. So we're going to go around round, round Robin and just share basically a happy happening. And we certainly hope that you have one for us tonight. Oh, am I starting? No. Oh, okay. We'll do that to I, you, right. John. I'll process. I'll process. Oh, That's good. Okay. Huh. Yeah. We're kindred spirits. Uh, you know, I think I'll kick it off. I'll kick it off. So I got one. I got one. I'm ready. I'm ready when you guys are oh, ready. Don't okay. rush it. I just want to make you feel comfortable. I'm okay, ready when you're you. ready. Thank you. You are the perfect guest. Yeah, I don't want you guys like worried about like John's going to screw this up. I got it. Okay. <laughs> so guys, my happy happening is that I assembled a team of walkers slash runners. So a group of ladies and I got together for the eighth annual uh, Love Walk and all proceeds went to the Women, Women's Resource Center to end domestic violence here in Atlanta, Georgia. And then my amazing friends that could not walk actually made donations straight to the Resource Center. So that was uh, pretty awesome. I could have gone without the police officer getting on his um, uh, megaphone from the car and asking if I needed assistance. <laughs> Tell about that. <laughs> oh, I mean, he actually asked me, you sure you don't want to get in the truck? <laughs> Thank you for your service. Um, but yeah, so that was a happy happening. That's Getting great. physical, doing something healthy for a good cause. Excellent. So that was that was my deal. Pete, what about you? You know, March March is the roughest month of the year for me, Mr. John. I am a music teacher at an elementary school, Ooh. so chorus sounds lunch, like band lunch, performances, all, all that of performances. Had a great week, but uh, I'll, I'll share something today. I started uh, in the classroom. I do a lot of projects with fourth and fifth, and um, what they're doing right now. You know, the reading month and all. Dr. Seuss mm -hmm. uh, wrapping Dr. Seuss books. I saw it online. Ooh. And it is so much fun. The kids are making their own mm -hmm. beats on GarageBand. And then they're picking out their Dr. Seuss books. Some of them are mixing up Dr. Seuss books. So they're learning form and music and they're going A, B, A and things like that. Wow. But then uh, once they make up their beat, they start rapping. Then they have to notate some of their rap. And um, boy, it has been so much fun hearing kids do Dr. Seuss to these really cool beats that I, they're so cool. I can never make them up. These kids are amazing. <laughs> so uh, that's There's actually, there's a, Edge your protocol called retell oh. in rhyme. 
There we go. Retail in rhyme, and it's a summarizing protocol. That that could be a party for you, Mr. Bush. There we go. Oh, so that's, that's going to be a great conversation. Yeah. There we yeah. go. Uh, Aaron, what you got for us? So mine is we went to Asheville for a nice long weekend. It was so needed to get away and just kind of shut everything down. I shut everything down. My outside business, the stuff I do with, in education, all that. And it was so great. And Asheville's just one of those places, if you've never been, where you can, it's got the beautiful mountains surrounding you. Mm -hmm. So you can see that. It's very nice, fresh air. But the people are just yes. amazing. It's just hmm. a bunch of characters, a bunch of creators. South Carolina? It, it's North Carolina. Brad Asheville? I guess where I am right, right now, I'm in Raleigh. Oh, ah! nice. Hey, I'm at good. NC Tice this week. Oh, very cool. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just great to get away and do something different. So yeah, I hope you're having a great time. And uh, I, I, it was yeah, just I'm, nice I'm to just it. kind of be in a different place. So that was my happy happening. Aaron, you warm my heart because you're getting better and better at this unplugging and getting away. I want to celebrate your growth. That's a happy happening for me. I love it. I love it. Well, John, we saved the best for last. What's your happy happening, sir? Get your tissues out, folks. Oh, gosh. Um, so when I went back to the classroom two years ago, so I'm going to start doing my bio for your guests right now. <laughs> so like I've been an assistant soup. I've been an executive director. I fired myself. I called my board and I said, I'm going back to the classroom, you guys. Yeah. I don't love admin. I don't love it. I love teaching. And that's what I'm going to do. And people are like, are you okay? I said, I <laughs> why should it be a negative to do what yes. we do? Right. Right. Like if, if, uh, if a, a general manager from an NFL team went to coach, people wouldn't go, oh, sorry to hear that you're not in the cool guy club. So anyways. What? So when I went back these two years, I had a girl in my class that was kind of tall and kind of quiet and wasn't really part of the class, you know, she was like mm -hmm. very kind of on her own and um, she had a really good year and I saw something in her and um, she grew a lot, like she grew a lot, like her ability to express herself, her ability to write well, her ability to do math grew dramatically, like she probably about doubled her output, right? Really good. And guess what I got last week? I got a, a real paper letter from her. Mm. And she's, it's two years later now, and she's in eighth grade. And she said, Mr. Crippo, our assignment is to write about a teacher mm. that, that made a difference in our life. And so that was cool. But what she <sighs> wrote was the part that's going to mess me up here. Because it's my jam. What she wrote is like my thesis. She said, every day, positive energy. And this is in the mm. middle of everybody's dying COVID, right? This is yeah. plastic cages and masks. You said, every day you were so positive. You patient with us. Mm. You always had fun lessons. And we learned so much. And I just wanted to tell you that you were a teacher that made a difference in my life. And so I was like... Oh, yeah. so that was my, that was Man. my, thing. thank you so much for sharing that. That's so awesome. Well, and that doesn't that fit under the category of taking a moment because like yeah. teaching can be such a grind. If people don't know, it's like, boom, Absolutely. boom, like Monday you're driving in and you're like, I got to get this right. And then mm -hmm. Friday you're driving home. Like I screwed that up and I got to get yeah. it right. And then Monday you're like, I got to get this right. If you haven't been a classroom teacher, you don't know what that part's like. The, yeah. the, the responsibility of 30 human souls. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's a thing. It is a thing. And, you know, John, as, as, as lovely as the letter, I'm even touched by what you said regarding going back to the classroom. Right. Like that's not somehow people see that as a demotion. Why is that a negative or a demotion? Right. That, is, yeah. uh, that is our optimal Absolutely. scenario. And imagine, had you not done that and been obedient, she would have missed that whole experience. Mm. Yeah. Well, and that leads me to another saying that I think you guys are going to dig, which is sometimes teachers look at their three rings of their career, so to speak, like this is mm -hmm. this is this year, and they don't get it, man. That girl only got sixth grade once, and it's my job to not screw it up. Yeah. She, I got, I'm going to get sixth grade again, but she only gets it once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if I screw up sixth grade, for the rest of her life, you know what she's going to say? 
I hated sixth grade. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't need that in my life. I don't right. need that kind of car. Yeah, and absolutely. when I say screw it up, I don't mean it's not just about being fun all the time. I mean, she's ready for seventh grade when she leaves. Mm. Emotionally ready. Yes. She's got a sense of herself. That's the she can compete academically. She can choose friends. She can stay away from crazy people. So when I say yeah. a good year, I don't mean like she sat quietly yeah. or good science fair or was cheerleader. I'm talking about like the whole package of what sixth grade is. Mm -hmm. And so to that. see her now uh, at a middle school thriving and being like she's on their ag team. She's in FFA as an eighth grader. Like she's wow. plugging herself into stuff. And she's not a farm girl, trust me. But I think she saw, <laughs> she saw like a structure to it, yeah, and or or a passion for animals, and she's in there. And so I love it. I think I think we wildly underestimate the people side of teaching. Absolutely, a lot. absolutely. Well, I I want to thank you for sharing your happy happening, and I don't want to belabor this conversation. Let's get let's dive in. That's right. Aaron, yeah. Take us a, take us away, Aaron. Okay, so I have a question for you before we dig too uh, much into the edu protocols. I am curious. I had never, you know, we're on the East Coast, the three mm -hmm. of us. And by the way, me too was, today. Uh, Fred's okay. <laughs> Fred just had a conflict and couldn't join us, so just wanted to let everyone know. If Fred doesn't like me. It's okay. He <laughs> well, doesn't. He can come back next show. <laughs> He'll come back next one. Tell me <laughs> a little a bit more about CUE because I I wasn't familiar with that, but I love oh, okay. what they seem so, to do. Do you know what ISTE is? Yes. So Q is the ISTE affiliate in California. Oh, amazing. So we're the NC ties of California. We're the TCEA of California. And it's uh, it's been around since, in fact, here's some fun dirt that ISTE doesn't like to talk about. Uh, ISTE was actually formed by former Q organizers. Oh, wow. Yeah, right Isti's headquarters. Yeah, headquarters. The people, the same people in the Silicon Valley mm. that pulled Q together that said we need a user group for teachers who are tech people. Mm. That same group, two of them ended up moving to Portland after they retired, and that group started Isti, wow. which used to be called what was it called? It was like the International Colloquia on Educational Technology or something. Well, it was well. this really long Fancy. name? So they. Just, <laughs> I see it why they changed like, it. Yeah. yeah, it was it was not good. But um, here's some more Q trivia. In 1983, at Cupertino High School, mm -hmm. Steve Jobs mm -hmm. was one wow. of the breakout session. He wasn't even a keynote. He was a breakout <laughs> session. <laughs> That's breakout insane. Sessions. That's insane. Yeah. And hey, friend, friends I out there. You can be in room 30. Uh, can you do Oregon Trail on Apple II for us? Okay, sounds good. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. And in, in our listener friends out there, and especially we have some, we have parents, John too, that that listen. If you're not familiar with the ISTE standards, I S T E, look them up. They're really, really great, really yeah. cool. A lot of school districts, states um, adopt them. Yeah, some, think of it about as a way that they they did a ton of research and they came up with things. The other instead of districts spending hundreds of hours saying what are essential things for kids to be able to know about technology, they said, look, we made a list for you and you can adopt their list and use it, which is really nice because then it, it gives a sense of continuity yeah. across mm -hmm. the state. And um, and there's no pronouns in there. So it's perfectly politically safe. It's totally Good. no gender at all. It's just technology. So, John, the question then is, you've done like over 60,000 trainings Ooh, using the... I got, I got Letitia muted on that yeah, last one. Yeah, you got one. Letitia, she, she muted on the, <laughs> on, the, on the giggle with that. Um, you yeah. see, you've done a lot of trainings through CUE with teachers. And so I'm curious, what's one huge thing that you see bubble up that educators seem to need the most in professional development or want, I guess, want mm. or need. Either. Okay, so the want, so I will I will not get, I don't, I don't know that they know what they want because if you're on TikTok, they don't know what they want. They know they don't want a pencil uh, for a teacher appreciation week. They know that. They know they don't want a cookie either. Uh, they know that they don't want any icebreakers. They don't want icebreakers. <laughs> They don't want teachers, they don't want facilitators who have either never taught 
or have never taught before NCLB. So those are the things they know they don't want. But here's here's what my magic sauce is. Oh my gosh, I, 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 I'm just going to go with just sauce. I don't know. Yes, that it's magic. let's do. Yes, let's go. Just sauce. magic sauce. But my magic. sauce goes like this: If you want to know the work, you have to do the work. Imagine that. You have to do the work. If you're going to sit in the back and color, I can't help you. If you brought your knitting or your essays to grade, also can't help you. Mm-hmm. You've got to do the thing. And here's why, though, the technical reason. I don't know if you, I'm guessing you guys have know what design thinking is. Yes. But one of the key tenets, one of the key tenets of design thinking is empathy. Yep. Empathy, yep. And so if you don't know what it's like to be the recipient of this crappy lesson, you do not properly despise it. Right. <laughs> and so uh, I, I get this quote, and people, uh, people have attributed it to me. It pops up on social media. If something seems sucky to 10-year-old me, I ain't doing it with kids. So I'm always running it through my 10-year-old me filter. If I mm-hmm. if I think, let's see, I wouldn't actually hate this. Okay, well, let's give it a try. But if I if I can find a thing that makes kids go, I will make your thick slide, Mr. Teacher. And I will make it about SpongeBob and all of his characterizations because I watched his show, then we're gone. So my biggest thing for teachers is you can't go and listen to people and learn things. You have to do things. Do. And then and then they're in a logic trap because then I go, hmm, so what you're saying is you can't just talk to your kids all day and have them skilled. They have to do things. Nice. And once you do a thing, what do you want to hear? You want to hear feedback. Yes. When? You don't want to know how your PD was a week from now. You don't want somebody to send your PD PowerPoint back with a star on it or a smiley face. Stickers. Stickers. Uh, even, even though we do love the stickers. Right. Like, <laughs> we do. <laughs> you want to know, you want to know that I challenged your thinking. You want to know that I gained a skill. And I think that's what's missing from a lot of PD is I'm going to spend 12 minutes telling you guys how cool I am and where I grew up. I'm going to tell you about my certifications. At 14 minutes, I am gone. I'm checking email. I am done. <laughs> so yes. my, my PDs typically start with a lesson right out of the gate. We, we start within usually three to five minutes. We're doing an actual technique. And then people go, ooh, this guy, he's got something. And it works. And then the what else you got thing kicks in. You got more of that? I got a 70 of those. And then they're like, here we go. Pour some yeah. sugar on me. Let's do this. Mm. And that that's when it all switches. So there's to back to your question, Aaron, there is a tension there between how much you do and how much you're going to learn. And my job is to make them do as much as I can, understanding that at 315, they're not really ready to do a lot of work work. So there's that there's that sweet spot there. Yeah, I love that immediate buy in, though. Right. Like, let's not linger in they, this they, they don't fluff. care right if i went to fresno state they don't right. care they don't you're right they don't care they are here for red meat feed me man yeah feed, you know mm. like you talk to the bartender after you get the drink not before i love it i love it right you don't want to hear new t-shirt minutes. pete new t-shirt. i don't want to hear your I'm i don't want to hear your life i don't want to hear your life story give me the drink and then i will listen so that's it's that same kind of vibe right like <laughs> and so but the, but my super super magic sauce this is my magic sauce is oh. if you want teachers to change their instructional practice you have to take the thing they think they love and you have to replace it with something that's easier to do Yes. Otherwise, they ain't doing it. If it's not easier, they out. Yeah. That's it's got to be better and easier. So yeah. what the, the best impact I've ever made anywhere on a broad spectrum is to go over and t- I go take over classrooms. So let's say, Pete, let's say you teach. What do you teach, Pete? I try to teach music. <laughs> okay. Today, I was a lot of different things. Now I'm a music teacher. <laughs> Okay, I'm a, I'm a film teacher. This Beautiful. you guys, if you haven't if you haven't been an elective teacher, here's here's what you need to know about electives. The first day of school, half the class. I don't know why I'm in this class. <laughs> half the class, 
because your your counselor said to. Mm. Why? Mm. I'm calling my mom. Mm -hmm. Dude, you're in this class. Just just hang on. Just chill. Three three days later. Now and right. Pete's given a garage band. He's like, you can podcast. You don't you can make stuff. This is phase two of that. I thought this was a fun class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So teaching an elective is a different kind of animal. But For like sure. if I went into Pete's class, I would crank up a book it mm -hmm. on common music notes. Yeah. I would crank up a uh I would do a word wall on arranging musical notes in the right order. And then we might do a sketch and tell where you analyze six notes from your favorite song. So you're gonna have to find the sheet music and then you're gonna have to tell me why you think the order of the notes matters in your sketch and tell. So you're gonna draw the music and explain it. So do you see the difference there? Mm. But when I, and Pete's already on the right vibe, but when I go and do that to his kids and they respond, He's like, ooh, that's good. Yep. Because mm -hmm. now you've got a little uh, jealousy going on. <laughs> and and I, I don't want to age judge anybody, but Pete, you look kind of young, but there used to be a oh, commercial. Thank you. thank you. You hear that? <laughs> you, there, that used to be a Pete. there used to be a commercial where the lady's at a party, okay? And her husband's drinking coffee. Mm. And uh, the other wife comes in and goes, Jim, do you want some more coffee? And the wife goes, Jim never wants a second cup. Mm. And Jim goes, yes, I do. <laughs> and then the wife is talking to the other wife in the kitchen. And she's like, Jim never wants a second cup of my coffee. And she goes, Marge, I drink you, Ben. It's the best. <laughs> so there's this jealousy thing involved yeah. where when I show up in your class, if I can get your kids to happily write four paragraphs for me, in 15 minutes you're thinking i'm have i'm lucky to get a paragraph a week out of these guys <laughs> mm -hmm. what's the sauce and i go yeah. okay here here's how i do it so really going in and demoing for teachers or pete here's a better example you probably learn more from watching other band directors work than you do from district pd oh wow oh. <laughs> oh, his right. network of colleagues for sure. Oh, yeah. you you yeah. go you go to the band things and you're like, oh, dude, look at that! And then you call me. How'd you do that? Yeah, that's going to get you farther than a handout from the district office saying, "Here's the eight steps to a successful band program. Make sure that you are on page forty three by October, because right. that ain't that ain't going to get her done." No. Nope. So what I'm hearing is a lot of collaboration is key. And I mm -hmm. also am hearing you mentioned some things that are in your edge of protocols, which are um, these learning frameworks that you developed mm -hmm. with Marlena Heburn. So can you tell us what's the definition definition for you of an edge of protocol? So an edge of protocol, uh, first thing is it can't be too tight. So like Letitia, if Letitia goes, here's my edge of protocol for teaching Native American tribes, that's too tight. It can't be like a singular thing. So think of like a Venn diagram. Every teacher can use a Venn diagram. Pete's going to be brass versus woodwinds. Aaron's going to be doing like Hamlet versus uh, Beowulf. Letitia's going to be doing like decimals versus fractions. We can all use a Venn diagram, mm -hmm. right? We can all use it. So it's that that's got that kind of ubiquity. If the less, if your protocol says I do this to teach logic then it's not a protocol it's just a really cool assignment hmm. the next thing with a protocol is it should be nearly all grade levels including adult learning so i do um one protocol called the fast and curious exactly the same way with kindergarten teachers that i do it with superintendents i love the, it. the pedagogical piece is identical and they're equally bad the first time uh so that's that's <laughs> cool um, the other thing is, so it's, it's a wide range of, of, uh, content mm -hmm. It is accessible in a wide range of grade levels. And then this is the other, this is the real, there's two more pieces. The, the next piece is you can do this once a week, twice a week, three times a week, every day for a quarter. 
every Wednesday all year long and kids don't mind. That's the last piece. So, and again, I'm going to use Pete because I, I, I know electives and stuff. How many times a year are your kids going to play scales? Mm. It's what we do, bro. Right, right. It's what we do. If yeah. Aaron coaches a volleyball team, what are the odds that we're going to do some digging every day? Because when the ball's coming, it's natural. Kaboom. And on scales, I got to be able to go CGF, whatever you guys do in music. I got to go boom, 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 boom. And I can't process that. It's got to be automatic. My brain and my fingers have to move as one unit. So we are going to do something like a, um, a, a mini report. That's every Wednesday all year. That means that kids are going to get 36 reps. We're going to do something like Cyber Sandwich two to three times a week all year. That means those kids are going to get like 90 of them. Hmm. So the state of the art keeps going faster, farther, faster, farther, faster, farther, faster, farther. And then the last piece is in the ideal edge of protocol, there is some element of pop culture. So hmm. Iron Chef is from the TV show. And in the TV show, they don't give you 45 minutes. You get 40. And after 40, you get the judge. You don't get one more minute. And you have a secret ingredient. Yes, you're going to have to have abalone in your appetizer, <laughs> your main dish, and your ice cream. Go. And so those things are all there. Um, mm -hmm. There's a protocol we do called Game of Quotes for that's excellent for silent sustained reading it's based on a card game there's an edge protocol called bukakucha which is based on the japanese drinking game called pechakucha huh. uh, almost all of the protocols have a pop culture something yeah you because guess what you mentioned cyber sandwich john and that sounds yeah. delicious yeah. what is that mm -hmm. oh i'd like to order it's that. so crunchy and full of nutrients um, can I supersize? <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. We do mega seba cyber sandwich. Um, so a cyber sandwich is basically, and this is where I really have start having fun with this. It's a think pair share. It's a rebranded think pair share. So I'm going to keep throwing Pete under the bus because he and I have good energy right please, now. So please, please. <laughs> let's say. And remember, let's he's say music that, elementary school. Music elementary school. Oh, I but get that. Everything. Let's say. Yep. But let's say that Pete, let's say part of his curriculum is teaching kids about famous composers. Mm -hmm. Let's say that's part of the curriculum. How would we normally do that? Hey, guys, I'm going to read you about a famous <laughs> composer. Hey, guys, I found this video about a famous composer. That's classically how we do it. And then here's what I know from teaching video. Nobody wants to watch movies at school. Right. No, movies at school are over. That's an old people thing. Nobody wants to watch movies at school. They're, they're only doing Finding Nemo so they don't have to work. They don't really watch. Okay. So watch this, Pete. In a cyber sandwich, I give I take two kids. Yep. One kid gets an article from, um, let's go like Smithsonian Magazine. And one kid gets something from maybe Ducksters or Wikipedia. So they have two articles. Each kid pulls five or six facts or summarizes on their own Google slide. See, so two kids each reading about Mozart or a female composer and taking notes. Then when those are, when they're both done with their part, they go together. This is the sandwich part, Aaron. Mm -hmm. They go together and the kids call this the cheesy slide. Uh, now we compare notes and Letitia might've noticed these five things and Pete might've noticed these five things. And we're looking for things that Letitia got and Pete didn't. We're looking for things they both got. So it's a little conversation starter. Just yeah. a little, you know, it's almost like speed dating. What'd you see? What'd you see? Oh, I never even noticed that. So then we do the Socratic seminar. So this all is cold turkey up till then. It's just like, here's a thing, go. Here's a thing, go. So then I do this. Each pair is going to be responsible for one of three responses. One of the options is Bazinga. Here's what blew my mind. Mm. Um, let's i'm just going to make one up mozart was raised in a single parent family or mm. he was deaf or you know whatever I'm, and the kid's like he, he was deaf oh my god i had no <laughs> idea the second option is wall of facts and that's for the non-committal kid just give me three facts born died important work of art and then the third option is question now that i've read this 
why don't I hear his music more often? Mm. And then you can be like, bro, you hear his music all the time. Mm. Let me show you a couple. So you have this schema, Bazinga, Wallafax question. And then we have every pair, boom, 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 gives me like 15, 20 seconds. So I get through the whole group in two or three minutes. And then they write a paragraph about what they learned today. And we're done. And the paragraph can be first person, third person, if you want to mess with them, second person. Mm -hmm. You should read more books about Mozart because you would learn a lot. And um, and it's just it's fun for the kids because they get to talk. They get to read. They're reading world-class things, not pulpy textbooks. Mm -hmm. And then I'm working on a skill that when their sixth grade teacher says you're going to do a state report or constitution report, they've already been working on the underpinnings. Mm -hmm of a thing that matters. So dig this, Monday Mozart, I did a little alliteration there for you, Pete. Tuesday Beethoven, I don't have anything that rhymes with Beethoven. Uh, <laughs> Wednesday, <laughs> Wednesday famous operas, Thursday Bugs Bunny opera. Mm -hmm. Hello. Which is, where I learned, which is where I learned most of my opera. That's where And then the at. fourth day, the fourth cyber sandwich uh, would be modern opera. So where are we going with this? Mm. We did five cyber, cyber sandwiches. Letitia, I'm not super good at math. But how many paragraphs do I have? Cinco. Ooh, my essay is done. Didn't feel it happening. Boom, boom, boom. Yep. Yep. So Thank that's you. where kids are like, so if I do five of these, my essay is going to be written. Yep. Yep. More so buy-in. Yeah. So you can chop them all into one Google Doc and then go run it through Grammarly. And then we'll have two other people read it. And then I'll give you some feedback. Project done in one period. Boom and boom. So that's the kind of the slide there, but here's the double whammy. If I know my kids are finishing their cyber sandwich every day, and I know they're finishing because they're doing it right in front of me, there's no surprises and there's nothing to grade tonight. Yep. It's, it's like a chunking method, which is what I used to do in uh, mm -hmm. some of my ELA classes, right? Especially kids yeah. who really struggled to write. Like you said, I would call it my, I was being like Miyagi, like karate kid, right? They didn't <laughs> right, realize- right, right. That mm -hmm. I was wax mm -hmm. on, wax off, right? That, mm -hmm. And at the end of it, all of a sudden, they had, so especially for kids who end up not turning something in, you're like, well, wait a minute, I saw you writing stuff. But because I was checking it, John, like you said, along the mm -hmm. way, I could at least give them some kind of assessment based on what I'd been right. seeing all week, even if they didn't hold your breath, turn the whole thing in at the end, because I had seen mm -hmm. it. Seen well, it. here's the here's the dirty secret of being a film teacher. If you got 150 kids and every kid makes a 10 minute video, that is 1500 of crappy videos to watch this weekend. Yeah. That's not good. That is bad. Mm -hmm. So I started doing layers. So I was like, let me see all your shots. You missed four shots. Let me see your rough edit. Let me see your credits. And I'm seeing one piece at a time. So by the end, I'm like, Letitia, did you fix the crappy sound in scene four yet? Pete, mm. that I told you yesterday, that shot's too dark, bro. I'm so sorry. And by the time I'm they so turn sorry. it in, by the time they turn it in, to Aaron's point, I already know what's there. Yeah. And they would get so mad at me because they would go like the last day. I'd be like, oh, Pete, that's an A. And he'd be like, you didn't watch it. I go, bro, I've been watching it for three weeks. That's right. I know where all the bad parts are. I already did that. And then we enter a film festival. Nice. John, I want to know where on this journey was this mindset, edgy protocols, these lesson frames, was this always a part of your classroom and then it branched out to something bigger and better and collaborating with others? Or how did this all start to come about from your classroom to where we are now? So uh, teaching is a third career for me. I did contracting. I did tech stuff. I did other stuff first. I wasn't really didn't hit the classroom until I was like 31. Okay. And what happened was um, I just got really tired of every, of me working really hard and nobody ever got better. Mm. Mm. And that's one thing you'll hear teachers like uh, I, I um, there's an old joke about sailors. You can only tell when they're scared because they're not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> that's an old admiral joke. If the sailors aren't complaining, they're scared. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And teachers are the same way. The CTA is screwing me up. The, the, my insurance is screwing me up. My schedule's wrong. The district office, my, my fingerprints are wrong. Like, they're complaining about everything. I've never, 
ever heard a teacher say this. I am killing myself. I'm working nights and weekends. I just spent 200 bucks at Target out of my own pocket and nobody's getting better at school. Think about that for a second. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we talk about it because it's too scary to contemplate that we're just spending time. Mm. It's too scary to contemplate that we're just spending time. Now, band directors don't have that problem because they can see that this group of sixth graders is now running a, a concert for the school board. They see a physical, real manifestation. Film teachers don't have that problem. I got kids who don't know what Final Cut is a year later entering film festivals. We do not have that growth in math. Mm. Right. We don't. We don't. The data is not there. And so we don't talk about it because it's too painful. So Pete, back to, I kind of went around Robin there. No. But I got, I, I, I could not keep working until eight o'clock every night and weekends for no result. That was the trigger for me. And so I took my football coaching experience because I used to be a grad assistant at the D1 level. I took my advertising experience because that's my actual diploma. And I started welding that into another thing. And then I took my pop culture stuff and I folded that in. So for example, one of the protocols is called the fast and the curious. Almost every teacher I've ever seen uses look at Kahoot and quizzes the wrong way. Mm. They use it for review. No, I use it for instruction. So in the classic classroom, I hold out Kahoot till Thursday. In my classroom, when you roll in on Monday, there's the go. Hit it. They play the game. I see how bad it is. It might be 30% right. I coach them on three or four, just like that. We're at 45%. We do that tomorrow. We do it the next day. And guess what? At, on Wednesday, we're sitting at like 87%. And I go like this. Who wants to? Hey, bro, we're going to play one more time. I need you to buckle in. Teachers see that as cheating hmm. or memorizing. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. That is no different than volleyball players practicing digging or football players practicing their get-off drill. That's muscle memory level stuff. It's muscle memory. You say three times three, I'm not going to do this <laughs> on three times three. It's just nine. <laughs> There's no mm -hmm. rounding. There's no conceptual. I think it's about nine. It's nine. And so you only get to those DOK one things with reps and reps and reps and reps. Yeah. Now we'll do other protocols for the high level stuff. But what I see in most classrooms, you guys, I've seen this with my own mm -hmm. eyes. Teacher in middle school, they're doing science review for the period. Science review for 50 minutes. You know how many questions? Tell me, tell me how many questions you think they reviewed in an hour. Mm. Scared to say. 14. In mm. an hour? That's in an that's hour. Awful. That and, it look, and it looked like this. The teacher had made this worksheet or found a worksheet with 14 sentences with a blank. And she literally did this at approximately two minutes per question. Okay, everybody, I'm going to read this one to you. Who's got an answer for number six? And then a lot of this. So your 10-year-old self, John, was not, not feeling it. And I'm like, dude, you are killing me right now. <laughs> Yeah. Put me out of my misery. Let's just give me the F at the beginning and then I can do whatever I want. <laughs> well, I, I definitely 14 would... questions in an hour, you guys. And wow. that's the state of the art. So when I was talking to the teacher later in a non-accusatory way, because <laughs> she didn't know what I was seeing through my lens. I said, so tell me, like, what was today about? And you know what she said? It was just a chill day. Yikes. And I'm like, 14 questions in an hour, that's not a chill day. That is, that is a stone cold dead day. That wasn't so a chill day for the kids. <laughs> no. They, and then the kids are having to sit quietly. Right. Oh, torture. 14 is mucus. Okay. <laughs> right. So now this is cool. Uh, there's another teacher I've been working with, a second year teacher in Southern California. She came up with Jumanji. So here's what Jumanji goes like. Imagine the same 50-minute class. We're going to start off with a 20-question gym kit. 
that is a, uh, 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 an overview of all the main concepts that will be on the test in two days. So play the game kit. The top five finishers will be able to sit with whoever they want because they're going to draft their teams. Do you think eighth graders are into that? Oh, yeah. Because they are. Mm -hmm. All right. We play that first round, 20 questions. It's only three minutes. We take four minutes to draft our teams. Now we've got five teams. Now I put this up on the whiteboard. Team one, team two, team three. Every team that has finishers in the top six when we play gets points for being in the top six. Why is that important? You see that box over there? It's full of donut holes. The team that comes in first is going to be eaten big. Okay, so let's go. And then I go like this. I go on Look It and I find two quizzes that are relevant to that vocabulary. I go on GimKit, I find two quizzes. I go on Kahoot, I find two. I find two on WordWall. And we do like literally 10 or 11 quizzes in the next hour. And, and they're doing 20 questions per quiz, which is 200 questions. Yeah. How do you think they're going to do on the test? Good. Yeah. How many kids do you think I have off task? Not many because they they want those holes. <laughs> We're going tempo, man. We're going tempo. Yeah. So in the same time that that teacher did 14 questions, wow. I got these kids to do 200 questions with feedback. So what am I grading tonight? Nothing. Zippo. Nothing. Well, winner, winner. Well, you are definitely, John, in your element. So I'm so excited and happy that you you did find your way into education I want to yeah. ask you, we've, we ask all this to, of our guests, is there a teacher, mentor, coach growing up that, uh, mm. you know, you want to give a little shout out to? Yeah. So um, I think hopefully she's still alive. Uh, Dr. Asahina, when I was at Fresno State, I was a junior with a 2.9 GPA and I rolled into her advertising class and then she heard I could draw and she made me the storyboard artist out of pure desperation for the team that won the national advertising campaign that year. Wow. And she believed in me irrationally for no reason <laughs> and put me in that spot. And then year two made me one of the leaders because I was the only junior on the national team from the year before. Hmm. And, but the real key there was not that. The key was when I got to advertising, it was project-based. Mm-hmm. Hmm. We we made TV commercials. We wrote radio ads. We got out scissors and we designed magazine ads. And what happened was once I started doing that hands-on stuff, my GPA went almost to 4.0 because I was finally engaged for the first time in my life. So Dr. Asahina did that for me. And to this day, guys, I can literally text her and go, can you judge a film festival for my high school rugrats? And 10 minutes later, yeah, when? Like that's the level of commitment she has, that's awesome. right? Mm. And that's what I think people want from their sixth grade teacher, which is what I'm trying to model. Yeah, I tell my sixth graders every year, you guys, and I'm not in the classroom now, but when I am, I tell them, here's the deal. I performed two of your weddings. I've, I've adopted one of you. I've told three of you when to buy houses. And uh, I've been to five of your weddings. I will probably meet you in a Target parking lot in 14 years with your two kids. This is, this is not a 180-day thing, bro. That's right. And, and I may never see you again. And don't worry, I have friends. I'm not just grousing for friends here. But the fact of the matter is, when we spend 180 days together, I feel responsible to you for the rest of your life. You can tap into me anytime you need to for the rest of my life. Do you know how that affects student behavior in my class? Mm. It, is a different, it is a different beast. It's a game changer. It's, mm -hmm. a game, it's a game changer. Well, this is a part where we're going to, and I, I'm so curious to hear what Pete and Letitia uh, are, are going to say, but we like to just give like a little something that you said that just sparked our interest or we totally want to to add on to or or just, you know, the conversation's just been really great and things that we want to make sure that we highlight. So we're going to do that and use our guests, get the last word. If there's something we talked about tonight that you- I'm going to get the last word either way, guys. I'm a professional sixth grade teacher. That's what Good. I do. What well, I'm I gonna do. Let, I'm going to let Pete go first. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I had some things written out. And then what he just said, John just said- His brain's just, he's in a brain fog right now. He lost No, it no, all. no. It's a good one. Uh, so I, <laughs> oh, I had thanks. something all set. And then I, I, I get connected more with what you just said. I spend 180 days with you. You can tap into me for the rest of your life. I have that same conversation with my students. I have them for six years. And I say, 
I'm going to yeah. see you longer than any other teacher <laughs> than for your, your parents. Entire, right. <laughs> and I said, I'm the one on the side that's crying that mm-hmm. last day of school. I mm-hmm. remember, you know, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. We, we, and I have those conversations with kids. So, and I just mentioned the target parking lot thing. So that really connects. Yeah, see, me. we're on the same wavelength. Totally. Like, totally. They're going to they're go, hey, Cripple, this is my kid. And what a thought to bring into PD and bring into, you know, uh, collaboration and all these groups. We just had one this week. The whole thought of, gosh, if you want to, if you want to know the work, you have to do the work. Who would have thought? So thank yeah. you, sir. Yeah. It's the one thing to appreciate music is another thing to play music, right? Exactly. They're, those are not the same yeah. thing. Exactly. Absolutely. Or a better analogy, maybe for Letitia. It's one thing to know a guy who appreciates a taste of beer it's another thing to hang out with a guy who brews beer Brews the beer totally different game totally different game one guy's just a fan <laughs> <laughs> all right letitia you're up okay so uh john when a guest has me like really has me it's hard for me to write <laughs> you have me at hello just wing it just wing it but you know what and the reason why why you had you had me at hello is because I mean just pure inspiration. Mm-hmm. Um, I love how you've had three careers, didn't start off great maybe as a student, finished strong, and then took all of that to give back mm-hmm. to the profession that sounds like did so much for you. The courage to leave the the front of uh, the admin administrative office you know so many people in you know in education that is the oh, they're terrified they're terrified you know, that's the pride they want to get there mm-hmm. and for you to leave that and to be and to honor your passion for the classroom is just pure inspiration for me so thank you sir for all that you do are doing and uh, yeah buddy you are the man <laughs> <laughs> awesome and john mine is it's interesting how you keep having these messages or things that keep happening around you and they all connect. And so, John, as we've been having this conversation, the things that you've been doing in the classroom, the things that you're training teachers with in professional development, your books, it, it reminded me of something a principal said to me the other day. And so I don't want to take credit for this. This is something he said. And I think this is what you're pointing at. And it's the fact that knowledge or just spewing out, giving people information to memorize that is finite, right? But if you teach someone a skill or how to do something, it's infinite. Like it's never ending. If you teach them Mm -hmm. that skill, they can always use that no matter what in different scenarios. And I think that's what you're doing and tapping into and, and why it was important to have this conversation. So I'm so thankful that you, that you came here, especially because I know you're traveling and, and att- attending conferences. So you are, you are definitely uh, burning the candle at both ends. <laughs> any, any last food for thought or anything you wanted to share? Uh, well, I would just say if people like this. Yeah. Yes. Free templates all, at edgyprotocols.com. It's free templates at edgyprotocols.com. <laughs> so get in there, go get them. Yep. And I do free lifetime tech support too. So that if they, mm. if they find me through your, your podcast, just drop me a line. I I enjoy nothing better than taking a person who wants to be effective with kids and is using the inappropriate technique to do it, which is lecturing and making them do worksheets. And then if they don't, benching them, have a good time with that. Mm -hmm. If you want to get off that train, I got the juice. I'll give it to you Mm -hmm. for free. Not a problem. That's awesome. And you also have your books are on Amazon. I want to mention that. As well. well, and I would like to say walmart.com. So different groups. Oh, okay. uh, Wonderful. You can, access, you can access them in multiple. If Amazon's too fancy for you, we're at Walmart too. So Okay. I love deal. it. And Pete, where can Barnes I- and Noble. Like, so there's a whole range there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pretty much everywhere. anywhere. You, pretty much anywhere. Uh, uh, Pete, where can our listeners find us? Wherever you're listening to us tonight, leave us a review. Let's keep the conversation going. We are on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and our website, teacherpeprally.com. Yeah, and, and we have a quickly, winner, right? Yes, real quickly. So we have, uh, you know, we've been giving away um, the novel, a novel effect. effect. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a subscription. So we have a winner, Anna Slowiak. Hopefully, I said your name right. Who's a fourth grade teacher out in Stoughton, Wisconsin? All so right. we're giving your prize, which is a one year premium sc- subscription with Novel Effect. Congratulations! We can't wait to hear from you and how you're using the app with you're your love kiddos. It. Yeah, congrats. Yeah. Well, thank you, John, for coming on. We appreciate you.
You guys are super welcome. I want to come back like in six months. Let's yes, continue. we'll make it happen. All Let's right, and then start doing some protocols, and we can vibe in with that, and then we'll do like. I'm gonna a have a cyber sandwich tomorrow for lunch. Mm. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> Pete, you could do a number mania mm-hmm. on uh, on famous uh, songs, like their yes. top ten chart positions and stuff like that. Let's go. And now you're doing language arts and music. Everybody's happy. Nice. I might not sleep tonight. <laughs>